every night the devil looks under his bed for Abaddon and Jeffrey R. Holland. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Really, really like the concept of being like an army of light. Just one more taste of adrenaline. Hebrew is called Abaddon. Okay, Abaddon was this angel that God put in charge of the gates of hell. He put in charge of destruction. Newtonian oh, mechanics yeah. and thermal <laughs> dynamics oh and then celebrity girlfriends. You go and finger yeah. gun. The following is a production of Ward Radio and does not represent the thoughts and feelings of KHTS FM 98.1 or the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. With that said, please sit back, relax, and enjoy the program. This is what we live for. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Ward Radio. I am your host, Cardin Ellis, and today I'm joined in the studio by Brad Whitbeck and Jonah Barnes, and we are continuing our foray, our voyage, like pirates of the Apocrypha, into the lost books, the lost manuscripts of all the Dead Sea Scrolls and all those other books that haven't showed up until this century. And Jonah Barnes is our associate professor of all things ap apocryphal, leading the charge like a seafaring captain into this unknown world, into revealing the wily depths of the Apocrypha. I am yes. hearty. Exactly. Exactly. We need a pirate apocrypha now. Gird your pantaloons, me hearties. <laughs> yes, exactly. And he has come up with some amazing treasures, no pun intended, ah. from the Ooh. apocrypha. One of them being that apparently, just like Jesus Christ is subservient to his boss, for lack of a better term, God himself. Okay. In the apocrypha, apparently the devil has a boss also. Mm -hmm. There is uh there's somebody even larger and more in charger what? than the devil himself. The devil's got a boss in the apocrypha. Where, That's right. Where and, does this come from? And Jonah, let me finish my intro. Oh, sorry. And <laughs> Jonah Barnes is gonna tell us all about it. Now, Brad, you had a question. Nope. No, <laughs> didn't have one at all. <laughs> oh, that's it. No, not gonna no, say it now. It doesn't sound one. like me, yeah, man. Okay, that's funny. All right. So tell us, where is the devil's boss? Where does the devil punch his card, according to the apocrypha? Well, so there's hints of this. There's hints of this, kind of all over the place. When we start to put it together, is it in the to... Book of Tobit? No, that one sounds it. shady to or me. Or Bell the Dragon. That Sometime one we need to talk about. Bell also the sounds shady. It's okay. just a cool sounding book, right? Um, <clears throat> so. Actually, there's okay, so let's go back to the very beginning. So, whoa, when God creates the earth, okay, in Genesis, the Genesis account that we have, at f when it says that the Spirit of God was just floating on the waters, it moved over the waters, right? Or the face of the deep, the face of the deep. Water deep has always been associated with chaos, that's always mm -hmm. been what water is, it's always been chaos, okay? Okay, Jordan so Peterson. He's he's right. The I know. I know. I'm just... The archetype for water and chaos. The Epic of Gilgamesh, right? He goes down in the water. Jonah in the whale. It's down in the water, right? That's yeah. like the, the 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 heroic journey type of thing, right? It's always this, this associated with chaos. Okay, so in the very beginning, God shows up and he moves along the face of the deep. Okay, there's nothing but chaos, and that chaos, okay, is sometimes embodied as a demon or a devil or a dragon. Okay, and Ooh, that's and, why you have the dragon picture in the Discord. Huh? Yes, and the dragon okay. is of course okay. over the waters. Okay, so oh, a Chinese dragon looking this like Mushu up in here. The uh, <laughs> Mushu. This actually shows up a little bit in the Bible. So before we get into the crazy stuff and everybody starts going, oh, that's just actually there. There's traces of this in the Bible. So in Revelations chapter twenty. Um, it talks about Satan being bound in the millennium. It says, I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand, and he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and bound him for a thousand years. Now, we hear that, and we think, oh, this angel could be Michael or could be, you know, whatever. Well, that angel is named in much of the Apocrypha. That angel gets a lot more detail mm. put in about him. It's not just some random guy who happened to clock in that day and got the binding the devil uh, task, you know? It's, uh, he has names. So in the Ooh, gospel- names. Lots of names. Okay. So in the Gospel of Nicodemus, okay, and in the uh, Armenian History of John, these are two apocryphal works that we find, very yeah. different places. They both recount the harrowing of hell, which we've talked about here before. 
Yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah, and in the harrowing of hell, when they get down there, there's a very strange scene that repeats itself in several apocryphal works. Mm. Okay, now when apocryphal says something crazy, you're like, okay, that's kind of crazy. But when like three or four like from different sources start to say something crazy, you're kind of like, hmm, maybe, maybe there's I should to pay this. attention. Yeah. You know what huh. I mean? So the Gospel of Nicodemus, chapter four, verse twenty, it says, Ooh, "Good verse." Sorry. <laughs> Brad didn't miss a beat there. <laughs> yeah. All right. Chapter four, verse 20. So it says, and when all were in such joy at hearing that Christ was coming, came Satan, the heir of darkness, and said to Hades, this is the Greek word, Hades, O oh, all devouring and insatiable, hear my words. There is of the race of Jews one named Jesus calling himself the son of God, yada, yada, yada. Sorry. Who is Satan talking to? It just said Satan is down there in hell or in uh, spirit prison. Yeah. And he turns to Hades. And further in the chapter, Hades talks back. In the Armenian Gospel of John, the master of hell answers and says, See, brother, this is verse 39, in case anybody's following along. See, brother, and ascertain who he is or from whence he is or whose son he is, lest by winning him, we lose many. So they're having this debate over should we let this should we let this Jesus guy in? And Satan says, Yeah, he's not the son of God. Don't worry about it. I've I've messed with this guy before. And he quest the the Satan Satan says that in the garden, Jesus says, If there be any other way, take this cup from me. And that's when Satan goes, Oh, he can't be the son of God because he has doubt. So he goes down and tells this whoever this is, mm -hmm. this isn't the son of God. Let's bring him down here. They agree, bring him down, and they go, oh, we made a huge mistake, and Jesus breaks the gates. So who is this thing? What is this thing that's down there? Okay, uh, In this, it's called Hades. Okay, In uh, in other works, in Hebrew, it's called Abaddon. Okay, Abaddon was this angel that God put in charge of the gates of hell. He put in charge of destruction. Uh, another word for it, and this uh, this is the creepiest one, is abraxas, abraxas. And there's a picture of abraxas as it's depicted in many Gnostic uh, works. Okay, he has a rooster's head. He's holding the sun, and he has snakes for legs. And the snake for legs motif, if you know, that means lifelessness. Okay, snakes oh. snakes have no uh, feet. Feet, uh, legs are the symbol for mortality. So snakes lose their first estate. They're, they lose their life. So this guy is the embodiment of unliving. The word abraxis comes from Hebrew. If you remember your Hebrew guys, barash, bar, the first word barashit, barashit in the in the in the in Genesis, yeah, means to create. Okay, and bara abara means to uncreate. Oh. It means to undo. Oh, interesting. So this demon, this thing, Abraxas or Abaddon or whatever you want to call him, is the undoing. He's the uncreating. And so Abraxas, some people, think it means he's uncreated and some means he's un the uncreator. Okay. Wow. In Now in Revelation chapter 20, same one that talks about this angel that comes down and binds Satan. It then says that, that death and hell will be thrown into the second death. Death and hell. Two things will be thrown into the second death. We have Satan talking oh, to Hades. And bring up that scripture again, Carden. Okay, yeah. You mean chapter in 20 chapter right 20 here? Chapter 20 of Revelation. Okay. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. So are you, are you saying this is like two separate entities? Death and hell? No. The devil that, and Satan? or No, so the... No, that right there is just referring to Satan. Oh, okay. But later on in the later on in that chapter, it says death and hell will be thrown into the second death. Okay? Okay. So, here's what I'm getting at, guys. Okay? Here's what I'm getting at. Um I want to make sure that I that I hit everything. Uh, oh, the, uh, Revelation chapter 9, it gives him a name. Revelation chapter 9, it says uh verse 11 they had and they had a king over them. Remember the remember the scorpions and like the, the dragons that come and start killing everybody, all the monsters come out. It's in Revelation chapter nine. Okay. Mm -hmm. For people who think it's extra biblical, oh yeah. Check this out. Chew on this. It says that they had a king over them, 
which is the angel of the bottomless pit. Remember the angel of the bottomless pit? In, in chapter 20, he brings the key to the bottomless pit. The angel over the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in Greek tongue, his name is Apollyon. Okay? So that's the guy later in, in 20 that binds Satan. So this guy who's king over the bottomless pit binds Satan later on. So, okay. So what I'm getting at, guys, we're going to change gears and come back. Don't, don't, it's going to make sense. Just hold, just, just, just bear with me. Yeah. No, I'm, dude, I'm smelling what you're stepping in. Keep okay. going, brother. Now, Professor Ellis. Yes. What did you major in at BYU? I uh, started out in physics, and then I served my mission. I fell in love with the Spanish language, specifically literature and poetry. You don't get a lot of girls reciting Newtonian mechanics. <laughs> you get a lot of girls if you're talking about. Wait, you don't? Te quiero, mi amor. You, you know don't get saying? a lot of girls citing Newtonian? No, nope, no. Nope. Okay. And the girls you do get look like boys. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> well. Ask anybody in engineering school. I'll change okay. that major. Mm, you know. So, okay. <laughs> so do you happen to remember, and this is not a quiz, but do you, it's not a gotcha. Do you happen to remember the second law of thermodynamics? Uh, is Well, the first law is that two uh, atoms cannot occupy the same space the second is that an object in motion will stay in motion if i'm no, not no those mistaken. are newton's laws of motion. we're talking thermodynamics oh thermodynamics, thermodynamics. yes yeah. i'm sorry okay um yeah he travels from hot to cold oh, oh. uh and then um the second is entropy oh if I'm not mistaken, you are right? an astute yeah. young entropy. man aren't you now yeah, yes entropy now consider this okay physicists out there nothing there's physicists will tell you the second law of thermodynamics okay this is associated with the cosmic heat death of the universe. Mm. If we live in a closed system of the universe. It's represented in the Book of Mormon as well. Oh, well. Uh? The Book of Mormon. Oh, yeah. They mention entropy in the Book of Mormon. Uh? What does Alma see in his vision? When the earth will fold like a scroll. Okay. And all of the elements will melt into one. Oh, here because, we go. Wow. Uh, and all the elements will melt into one with fervent heat. Fervent heat? Is oh. Specifically, do you remember that phrase where it talks about uh, in fervent heat? I didn't even know. Um, I, I didn't even have this. Yeah. So know. there's, uh, in fact, I, I will look it up. But basically, um, scientists have done the study and they've, they've surmised as best you can. I mean, the same people that think the Big Bang is quantifiable and measurable yeah, are yeah. the same ones that think the end of the universe is quantifiable and measurable. Uh -huh. They're all fools. Okay. But they have some very interesting calculations oh, based off God. of all kinds of, well, it's, it's just, just, they are clearly I'm all fools. Yeah, well, they disagree all, with me. Yeah, so yeah, they're yeah, fools. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's a very, very, look, I may, I'd make a good physicist. Okay. Hey, he knew the second so, law of thermodynamics off the top of his head. I mean, come on. There you have it. Come on. Yeah, what exactly. more do you need? <laughs> um, well, basically, they've, a, a lot of people have surmised what the temperature of the universe would be if you actually did have all of the heat and cold in the universe mold into one at the end of time mm. when all of entropy has actually finally worked. And I think they said it would be somewhere around 400 some odd Kelvin, which is enough to literally melt some elements. And so if uh, Isaiah were to have seen that actually in a vision mm. and say when the earth will fold like a scroll uh -oh. and the elements melt with fervent heat, Mm. Um, and yeah, so there's a, uh, there's a revelation 614. It says the sky receded like a scroll being rolled. And then also in the book of Mormon, um, I'm looking up book of Mormon scripture right here. Uh, where does it say fervent heat? And I got to make sure that I spell it correctly, but, um, fervent heat and roll up, I guess. The problem is it's going to give you all biblical references. No, here's Mormon also... nine. Let me see what it says. Behold, we believe in the day of your visitation. Behold, when the Lord shall come, yea, even that great day yeah. when the earth shall be rolled together as a scroll and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Yea, in that great day when you shall be brought to stand before the Lamb of God, then you mm. will say that. And so a wow. lot of people talk about the fact that um, time d maybe didn't function with the same constant that it does now. And in the end of times, it may not function with the same constant that it does now. So possibly these prophets could have literally seen entropy in its final iteration, resulting in the earth literally being torched from the heat of the universe. Wow. Okay. So you're kind of Pretty looking cool, ahead. Huh? You're kind of looking ahead. Yeah. At the yeah notes okay. Here. Oh, I didn't realize that. But yeah. Keep yeah. going. Don. This is great. You know, you're okay. You know your stuff. So. Physicists will tell you, boys and girls, if you didn't, if you didn't major. So I also was a physics major at BYU. Um, 
But uh, shut what, up, really? Yeah, I was. Yeah, that's how I first went on physics scholarship to BYU, and then I changed. Um, but yeah, I started off in physics. My brother nice. got a PhD in physics, and so I thought, oh, I want to do that too. Oh, dude, oh, so that's dude. Physics. I'm that's and you cool. dated Lindsey Sterling. Oh boy, dog! Oh, okay, so You're busting out Newtonian <laughs> mechanics, and thermal dynamics, <laughs> oh and then celebrity girlfriends. You <laughs> go and you finger go. guns. Oh, you oh my god! Oh, you finger yeah. guns, oh, baby. Yeah. <laughs> okay, keep going. Keep so, going. Okay, oh, so. you were the inspiration for the song "The Stars Align," right? Like uh, ah, yeah. oh, by the way, we I'm will allow you. We will allow you to awkwardly transition out of this conversation. <laughs> Well, what's this we? What's this we? I oh boy, Brad's on it. Okay, okay so don't worry. Uh, keep to bring Continue. it back to bring it back to relevance here, boys and girls. So, um, the uh, where was I? Where was I? Yes. Yeah, yeah, so er, entropy. When, when you study physics, okay, you learn about this thing called cosmic heat death. You learn about entropy. Now, entropy, boys and girls, entropy is not something that happens. Entropy is everywhere. Entropy is always. Entropy is ever present. Everything is constantly, perhaps slowly or quickly, spinning towards complete and utter dissolution towards this thing called cosmic heat death. If you imagine uh, a glass of water, a glass of Coca-Cola on this on this table right here. Actually, well, you know, close enough. Okay. If you have, you know, a can of a can of soda right here. Okay. When you open that up, you, you're starting entropy and everything in there, all the chemical reactions are getting done. You leave it for a few days, it turns flat. You leave it for a few thousand years, it all evaporates out and even the metal itself melts down and the table itself turns to dust and everything is just a, a, a stew, a cosmic stew. Everything's yeah. the same temperature and everything is the same state of matter. That's cosmic heat death. It is the nothifying of the universe, okay? Mm. And that is something that physicists will tell you is not a maybe, it is inevitable. It is where the laws of physics say we are going, okay? Okay? Now, there's one thing that screws up that whole theory. Jordan Peterson telling you to clean your room every morning to fight entropy. Wow. And that's all. You heard it here at Ward Radio. No, yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Continue. Continue. Keep going. Keep going. No, 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 no. It is. So there's one thing that screws it all up. If you have a pot of dirt, it's only going to get less organized, lower order. Okay. It's only going to get less complicated. Okay. There's only one thing that takes it from lower complexity to higher complexity. And that's life. Life is the contradiction to all the laws of physics. Life doesn't make any sense. A seed in that pot of dirt will eventually turn into something bigger, a higher level of order, of organization, of complexity. Life is the antithesis to the chaos. It contradicts all these laws. It fights against entropy. Mm. So God, on the face of the deep, God is the first mover of life in the universe. He's going throughout the universe, planting these seeds of life. And in the Apocrypha, we read in the Divine Investiture of St. Michael, in some of the original books of uh, the, the, the books of the life of Adam and Eve, it talks about the seeds that are planted here on the earth. The seeds are not created. They're brought here from other worlds. Hmm. All the angels bring treasures. They call them the, the treasures. And they bring these seeds and plant them all over the earth. And they're all planted when the earth is created until then it rains and then they all grow. That these seeds, and we are these seeds, are being planted throughout the universe, the chaos, slowly creeping our way through the deep of the universe, taking things from a lower state of matter, a lower organization, a lower order, to a higher order. So God is against this entropy, this Abaddon, this demon of, just, of undoing. So Abraxas. are we saying this Abraxas is literally just like an ancient Hebrew or Greek word for entropy and entropy is the boss of the devil? So the devil wasn't always the devil, right? The devil was originally a son of God, a son of the morning. He was a good guy, I guess. And then he fell, right? So what I'm saying is that according to these to ancient- a lower order. He fell. Ah. Yes. So I'm saying that according to these ancient documents, if we piece these things together and even take verses from the Bible, we can we can prove that their boss that 
The devil had a boss, somebody calling the shots that's even more nefarious and more evil and more destructive than the devil himself. And do you think the reason why we don't know more about him is similar to the quote from The Usual Suspects where it says the greatest trick the devil ever played upon humanity was convincing it that he didn't exist? So maybe this Abroxas is so smart he knows that you can be the most effective by not getting your name out there, by being silent but deadly. Like, well, some of the some of the texts <laughs> disagree. <laughs> Thank you for cutting him off. That was very well timed. <laughs> some of the documents disagree, okay? Some of them say that this thing is ever present and always has been. The uncreated and the uncreator. Okay? And some of them say that he actually works at the behest of God himself. He was put in charge of hell. He's put in charge of the second death, the undoing. Hmm. And so eventually Satan will be grabbed by this guy and chucked into the lake of fire and brimstone. And what is fire and brimstone? What does lava do? It undoes hmm. whatever you are. And so his soul will be cast into this undoing, the outer darkness, sometimes it's referred to, or the second death where he'll be undone forever. And this angel who was appointed to this task who's given this job works ultimately for God, but he has power over the devil. That's one theory. The other is that he's ever present and it's all over the universe and that God is fighting against this chaos by slowly moving life forward. That's why Joseph Smith said, if you properly understood the plan of salvation, you wouldn't even kill an ant because life everywhere, always life itself is a tribute to God the higher creator, the order, the Ooh. higher complexity of matter. He said that that's kind of almost like ahimsa in some of those um, ancient Indian cultures and things like that. Yeah, Jainism, big time. Yeah. Wow. I always wondered, like. So what did on. Joseph Smith say again? Can you repeat well, that you quote? Know, I'm going to look it up here because You're I'm look worried. Up, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm getting a little sweaty under the car. No, as you're looking it up, okay. this has led to some funny things where I like, I do my best not to like kill anything that I don't need to. So okay. <laughs> occasionally I will like, when I find like bugs in the house or whatever, I'll try to catch them and let them out. So my wife is like, no, just let me do it. I'll just kill them. I'm like, no, stop. <laughs> like, what if, Yeah. what if there's value in this? And it's dumb. I should oh, shoot. I, I'm beginning to think it wasn't ant. It was some other bug. Oh. And so Maybe like a black widow for, Oh, forbid stepping on it. Okay. 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 Forbid a stepping spider? on an ant, a box elder beetle. A box elder. Oh, I hate those things. A kissing uh, bug. A was it a snake hawk? on Zion's camp? Oh shoot! I should have found it before this, people. But I swear, okay. I, I, I know <laughs> you're. I've read the quote you're referring to. Yeah, it's some. It's, and it's something like that. If you properly understood the plan of salvation, you would never kill anything because life itself, life everywhere, always is superior to death and the lower order of things, to that chaos that we're being rescued from. God is. We are agents of life. We are the army of life going throughout the universe, rescuing it from this unness, from this chaos. Okay. So. And last question. How many of uh, the apocryphal works that you've analyzed make reference to this? Well, lots of them. Uh, in in, in uh, the Gnostic texts, uh, they, they talk a lot about them. Oh, what's the name that they give them? It's a cool name. Oh, Saklama. Saklama or um, Samael. Uh, sometimes they confuse it with Satan, with Lucifer who fell. Okay. So you're reading it and you're like, wait, is this, are these two different guys or is this one guy? It happens all the time. Yeah. But now, uh, yeah. Uh, looking at these, is this more of a Gnostic idea in general? Yaldabaoth. Or is it Sorry, Yaldabaoth. That's the yeah. Gnostic. Yaldabaoth, which actually means, so that's the name that they give Satan and it means son of the undoing, son or heir. I remember in, in Revelation it said the heir Right. He was the, in, 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 in Nicodemus, the heir of darkness. And when did this really start showing up? Because you know how the Apocrypha, I mean, HMD is an imperfect quote, end quote, science. OK, um, but what's the earliest date you can pretty much give this concept of the devil having a boss? Oh, I, I mean, in Genesis, it talks about God on the face of the deep. Right. I mean, uh, the first mention of Abaddon. I think by name in the Hebrew Bible, I think is actually, uh, is actually revelation. Oh, well, that might not be true, but in the Gnostic, I mean, they go back pre-Christ way, way pre-Christ Wow, talking about some kind of angel that was put in charge or a demon or a power 
that is the that is even more powerful than the devil who and eventually Lucifer will be cast into the jaws of this thing and so freaky wow. stuff kids so every night the devil looks under his bed for Abaddon and Jeffrey R. Holland. Okay, so there's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, this is crazy. I mean, this I love this. Yeah. This is great. There's... I really really like the concept of being like an army of life. I think that's really yes. cool to like increase the order in the universe and increase the goodness of the universe in a way that like all of God's commandments lead towards better lives, you yeah. know? Uh, so that's that's a really fascinating way to look yeah. at it. Yeah, I can hear my cynical aunt right now saying, there's two laws in the universe. One, there ain't no such thing as a free lunch. And two, everybody's got a boss. And now she has to say, everybody's got a boss, even the devil even, himself. Even the devil you himself. Know? Yeah, that's great. So anyway, um, guys, thanks for hanging out with us. This was great stuff. Um, if you guys want to hear more of this super cool I wouldn't call it science, but super cool. <laughs> Pseudoscience. Yeah, pseudoscience. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Um, please check us out on wardradio.com. If you'd like to see more programs just like this one, you can also look us up on homestation.com on AM 1220 and FM 98.1 KHTS. Also, for this and more to reach out, please check us out on our website at wardradio.com. <laughs> <laughs>